Welcome to Disciples Net Church. We are so glad you've joined us for worship. Feel free to join in with hymns, pray with us, and share in communion. Wherever and whenever you are joining us, God's Spirit and people from all over the world are here with you. So let's prepare our hearts for worship. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, Melt me, mold me, fill me, use me, Spirit of the Our creator, our provider, our strength, our love, our friend. God, we come to you this day just rejoicing in who you are, rejoicing in this life that you've given us, God. God, even through the hardship that we may be facing, Father, we thank you for this day and we thank you for your love and we thank you that today you have given us another opportunity to show someone else your light and your truth. Mother, we thank you for how you have nurtured us and for how you have cared for us and sent love to be with us. Brother, sister, we thank you for your companionship that walks with us along the rocky journeys of this world. We thank you for your presence that is with us, giving us the strength and the courage to go out into the darkness and to be the light in all those places who are in need of your love. Today, O oh God, we lift up to you those who are dealing with the hardships of natural disasters, whether they are close in proximity to us or even across the oceans. We thank you for their lives and we pray, O oh God, that you would give them comfort in this their time of need and that you would send to them all of the riches that they need to rebuild and to come back together that you would give them hope where there is despair, and that you would let your people really be your hands and feet and help to meet the needs of others. We thank you now, God, for an opportunity to share your word with someone who doesn't know you. We thank you for the people who will randomly come across one of us and get to know you. Help us be ready for that moment. God, give us the reminder that even when it seems like we are all alone, that you are with us. For when our mother and our father and our friends and our family members forsake us, then you take us up. Then you are with us. Then you love on us and dote on us. And we are ever so grateful to know that we are not alone. Hear our prayers today as we cry in silence when no one else is around. Hear our prayer today as we rejoice with everyone who is present with us. God, today, you have made all things new. We have new mercies. We have another chance with grace. And for that, we give thanks. Heal the broken heart. Redeem the loss. Restore our minds, Father. Be with us, O oh God. Give us your energy. Move through us by your spirit. And now let us pray. 
the prayer that you taught your disciples to pray. Praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven. how would be thy name? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Excerpts from Psalm 25. O oh my God, in you I trust. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Make me know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore the Lord instructs sinners in the way. God leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble God's way. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. I am weak, but thou art strong. from all wrong I'll be satisfied as long as I walk let me walk close to thee just a closer walk with thee granted Jesus is my plea Life is o'er Time for 
was 1990, and the National Aeronautic and Space Administration, NASA, was in the process of changing gears from manned missions to sending specialized equipment into space. One such piece of equipment was the Hubble Space Telescope. Hubble was intended to stretch the boundaries of what we could observe. Far above the atmosphere, which warps and interferes with light as it proceeds to observatories on the ground, Hubble could show us with clarity what we had only seen blurs of in the past. However, when the first pictures came back from Hubble, scientists were dismayed to find that the images were in many ways worse than what we had from the ground. Something had gone terribly wrong. It turned out that the main mirror of the telescope had been shaped and polished incorrectly. And, due to budgetary constraints, NASA had canceled the production of a backup mirror and the process of having both mirror producers check each other. As a result, the Space Telescope launched with a mirror that didn't reflect properly. It gave a distorted image. Now, the story might have ended there if not for some brilliant NASA engineers that figured out how to reprogram the optical systems to correct for the mirror's misshapenness. And soon, Hubble was sending us back clear and incredible images that have increased our understanding of what lies beyond the surface of our Earth. Just as Hubble's mirror was misshapen, producing a blurred and distorted image, so too our own spiritual vision can be misaligned and distorted, marring the image of God within us and producing distorted theology, doctrine, and action. There are three types of sin that we can see described in Scripture. The first is a deliberate and willful breaking of God's ways. The second is acting in error or confusion because our understanding is distorted. The third is the failure to do what is right. We may think that we can weigh these three types and say that the first, willful disobedience, is the worst. And there is some truth to that. However, when it comes to the consequences of sin, our intentions really don't matter as much as we'd like to think. Creation is still harmed. Relationships suffer. People are hurt. We who struggle to live in this life of faith know that our lives are often wobbling back and forth between good points of strength and bad points of weakness. Like the psalmist, we long to live according to God's ways. But also, like the psalmist, we must admit that we fail and falter, and we must rely on God's grace to lift us up. Yet the psalmist doesn't leave us with simply recognizing the sorry state of our attempts to live this life of faith. Embedded in this psalm is a way out. And it begins with the understanding that the ways of God are not simply rules. The answer is not simply trying harder to keep a list of to-dos and don'ts. Psalm 25 focuses on the covenant relationship between God and us. The ways of God have to do with walking with God, living out your life, realizing that God is ever near to us. We walk this path, which sometimes brings pain and struggle, but always with God at our side as Savior and friend. God knows 
that we are sometimes weak and we sometimes fail. God knows that life can come at us in ways that mar and malform the image of God within us. We wish it were not so, but we have seen it in our own lives. The psalmist cries with us that God would not let those who wait for God be put to shame. Now, the word translated to wait here is an interesting one. It does not simply mean biding one's time. It means to wait in hope. And what is that hope? The solution to sin, the way through suffering, the way of hope is to recognize that even in our weakest moments, God is there, teaching us, instructing us, helping us to find God's ways in spite of the distortions in our own thinking and acting. Being instructed by God does not eliminate life's pains or even tie off all those loose ends and missteps that we've made in life. But that instruction shows us that we can wait on God to complete what God has begun to work in us. We can wait in hope. We wait knowing that God wants to be correctly understood and wants that image of God within us to be unblemished and undistorted. We wait knowing that God will speak to us through the Word and through God's people to tell us where the mirrors of our soul are misshapen, where we need the software of our hearts to be rewritten by the Holy Spirit so that people will see God in us. We wait knowing, as we humbly receive that instruction, we will be changed into better reflectors of God's light in this world. We wait, being convicted and humbled by our failed attempts, but even in the failures, hearing God's instruction that helps us learn from our mistakes. And even as we hear that instruction, we realize that in every word of correction, God is speaking love to us. God is not rejecting us because of our sin. God is correcting us so that we can be better so that we can still be part of God's unfolding realm. We know that God's hand is not raised to strike us down, but reaching out to us to lift us up. We wait knowing that in the end, people will see in us an undistorted image of God and have their own understanding grow and flourish. As we progress through Lent, in this time of self-examination, let us commit ourselves to working to let that happen. May we become true and accurate mirrors of God. Amen.
Pastor Bob was telling us of the beginning of Jesus' ministry and some choices that Jesus made as to whom he would follow and how he would serve God and how he would be faithful to what God had called him to do. As we come to the table now, we're actually looking at the opposite end of Jesus' ministry because it was at the Last Supper that Jesus gathered with his disciples and prayed and broke the bread and drank the cup and in that asked them to remember him to remember what was most important to him and in the same way the disciples were to do likewise and so as we come to this table whether you have bread and cup before you or it's in your mind and we're doing it symbolically much of this is symbolic anyway but we come to remember that most important thing that we're called to do and a service that we're called to. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this bread and this cup and what they signify. We ask that you bless the bread and the cup that's with each person listening here, whether it's physical bread or something like that that they take and eat and in the cup, or if it's in their mind's eye, we ask that you bless that. And as we take these in remembrance of you, let it be a reminder to us of what you've called us to do, the task that you've called us to do, and the forgiveness of sins that Jesus came to teach us about. These things we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. For it was on the last night as Jesus was eating with his disciples that he took a loaf of bread. And after he had blessed it, he broke it. And he said to them, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after they had finished eating, he took the cup. And said to them, this cup is the new covenant of my blood poured out for you. For as often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, you show forth my death until I come again. Won't you take, won't you come? Friends, we have heard the good news that God will correct the errors in our hearts and minds and set us on the path of being right reflectors of God's light in this world. Go then into your world, working to hear God's teaching and working to correct our distortions of God's image. Go into your world, sharing the light of Christ with all you meet. And God, who is our light and life and our way, will be with you 
all the way. Amen.